Fast and Loud ended after this happened. That's worth like 50 grand. And because you're with me and you ain't got any insurance, I'm gonna be the one that pays Before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel down below and click on that notification bell to be updated on our latest uploads. Every car fanatic out there knew of the entertaining world of Discovery Channel's very own Fast and Loud. It was indeed fast-paced and chock-full of entertainment from wild car flips and over-the-top imaginative requests from head honcho Richard Rawlings that left the team at Gas Monkey Garage to be truly challenged within their innovative ways. The Gas Monkey Garage soared past rating expectations and created a following of car enthusiasts, hobbyists, and even the younger generations across the world. The impact they made on the entertainment television scene was as loud as some of the final productions that came out of the garage doors. So what happened to why the show ended? Why did Rick and his Gas Monkey Garage team come to an end? Well, it looks like you were in the right place. Here's what we know. People see something like this in a field and they think it's a piece of garbage. But the guys like us, this thing is gold. Gotta make cars that, uh, number one, you can drive. And number two, are just badass. Scare women and children. The shop's tough beginning. Some would find this almost hard to believe, considering how impressive and well handled the Gas Monkey Garage and the brand that it had built for itself was. Rawlings' first business venture was a printing business, which he later sold to start a garage in Dallas, Texas. The thing is, however, they started the whole company simply working out of a tiny little mechanic shop that was no more than 1,200 square feet in itself. To add to that, the water and air conditioning weren't even operable. Could you imagine being crammed under a car up in the small mechanic shop with no air conditioning, trying to install a chassis on an old 69 Camaro? Yeah, it'll suck. But the idea came to Rawlings to start a whole new reality show that would be focused in whole on a rat rod style shop. This idea was not around at the time of his conception, and boy were they in for a ride. The shop opened around 2004, and it took eight years for Rawlings to convince the Discovery Channel to film their shop. It turned out to be a successful show running for a full 16 seasons. But as you'll find out though, it had some significant issues leading to its cancellation. All right, so does that mean we get to go home? No, because as good as this hood looks, you still gotta get us the doors. We've been here for two days, we haven't gone home. So have we. The outrageous work schedule. Long nights and longer days were a regular schedule for the cast and crew. When you work hours on end and are also doing some backbreaking manual labor, the lack of sleep can start to get to you. Couple that with the anxiety of being on camera non-stop at times and feeling like there is a sense of lack of privacy, then you have a ticking time bomb waiting to go off. Some reports say that the crew went 16 hours on end with filming and getting the right shots. Sometimes they were asked to repeat or even remake things that had happened that the producers wanted to recreate. There were times behind the scenes and on camera that showed the crew just getting to their wits end. After 16 successful seasons, the show most definitely may have become daunting on some. We surely saw how it fared on Rawlings. You should be working. Don't be listening to me. Get in there, do something. Jeez. I mean, you're the lowest man on the totem pole. I'm an idiot, and I'm pretty sure I can build the proper mount for that in about two hours. Rawlings Attitude. Rawlings' attitude and personality is a big reason why his show ran for eight years, but he was described as someone who doesn't listen to anyone except himself. With the rise in success of the show, so did his ego. It was difficult for the staff to have a positive view of their boss when he never admitted any weaknesses, even when he made a mistake. Rawlings' attitude can be a reason why the shop had such a high turnover rate. It's safe to say that if you worked for Richard, you wanted to be on his good side. That was thanks to Captain Insano! Tom Smith and the rules. Let's face it, either you love him or hate him. Tom Smith was a former cast member of Fast and Loud, who also happened to be the reigning champ at becoming the most annoying member of the Gas Monkey crew. Smith's co-workers had established special rules whenever he became too annoying for their sanity and mental state. 
According to the office manager, Christy Brimberry, the staff had special methods to handle the talented but disobedient mechanic. Once, when a fan asked Brimberry how she handled Tom, her response didn't seem to describe a full-grown, well-articulated businessman as treated him like a child when his behavior is offsetting. Otherwise, Tom would get loud and obnoxious like a kid that just was not able to get their way. Which way is he going? Wrong way! Oh! Oh! Go, 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 go! The shop today isn't like it used to be. We were all shocked to see the news when we found out stars Jordan Butler, Tom Smith, and Scott McMillan were fired by Rawlings. These cast members and mechanics were favorited by viewers, and fans were outraged at the reason for their severance. According to Tom Smith, he and Jordan Butler were filming at the garage one day when a fan with cystic fibrosis wanted to get a picture with Rawlings Rolls Royce. This changed how fans viewed Rawlings, and he probably felt bad after. So he helped create another show called Misfit Garage, where the old Gas Monkey employees tried to replicate and compete with Rawlings Shop. But why would Rawlings fire his staff just to cast them for a new show? Sounds like more drama just to make another show out of. It's pretty simple math. This costs more, so you have to produce more. That's the part I didn't tell everybody. Everybody's taking a 20% pay cut so that I can afford this building. Lawsuits and Business Ventures Richard Rawlings' goal is to turn Gas Monkey into a billion-dollar brand. And to do that, he can't just flip cars and make a TV show about it. He has created a large merchandise line, Gas Monkey Bar & Grill, as well as Gas Monkey Live. Unfortunately, his dream concert venue, Gas Monkey Live, has been officially closed due to a lack of profitability having such a large venue and only hosting a few people, and their landlord had issues with him as well. So that leaves us with the Gas Monkey Bar & Grill, which filed a $6 million defamation lawsuit against Rawlings in 2018. In the lawsuit, bar employees noted how problems began with Rawlings as soon as it was first being constructed. He apparently was extremely disruptive and treated the construction workers very poorly. The employees described Rawlings' behavior as that of a spoiled 13-year-old. He was later banned from the construction site, so it could be opened on time. So hopefully, the merchandise line can make it big. Everybody hold on to your hat out there. Fast and loud is no more. <gasps> We're going to be doing some cool things in 2021, and uh, it just was a, a perfect storm, so to speak. It was time for me to uh, uh, expand. Creative development issues and the end of fast and loud. Everyone would think that something must have happened for the very successful show to be brought to an end. But the truth is that it was a decision made by Rawlings solely by himself. The reality star made an appearance on Joe Rogan's podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, and made surprising news about the future of Fast and Loud. The Gas Monkey owner shared on Joe Rogan's show that a decade ago when he initially signed up with Discovery, social media was not the powerhouse it is now. Discovery wanted to have complete control of Richard's social media and his millions of followers. This means that Richard had to share info on other Discovery shows and less about his personal life. So that's one of the things I want to talk about, about the vacation and uh, maybe extending it a little bit further. To quote Stevie Nicks, I think I have to go my own way. The end of an era. So what should the massive amount of Fast and Loud fans expect from the Fast and Loud crew in the upcoming months? Richard is going to do a podcast first. Always the entrepreneur, he sees that his type of business is an underutilized podcast topic. He wasn't able to do one before due to his contract with Discovery. Longstanding member Aaron Kaufman is doing his own spinoff of the show called Shifting Gears, as well as his other show, Aaron Needs a Job. Two absolutely opposing types of shows if you really think about it. This may be an end of an era and the beginning of something very exciting for Richard Rawlings and Gasma. What do you think? Will the shop ever have the same fame and fortune as it once had? Or will Rawlings start another TV show? Leave a comment down below and let us know. And while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. Also, don't forget to check out the link below for the crustiest merch you've ever seen.